Hey everyone, it's Nephi Anderson backstage at 106 in Park with the one and only Lecrae. How are you? Doing, doing well, doing well. How you doing? I'm great. So we are so excited for your new mixtape. Come on. Church Close 2. Can you tell us how it will differ from part one? Uh, well, you know, one is just maturity. You know what I mean? Just so as I've matured as a person, you just you get to hear the growth of me as an artist and uh and two, just a lot more comfortability in, in, in my own skin and uh, and just getting to say some of the things that, you know, I would uniquely say. But great production, you know, got David Banner, Boy Wonder on there, you know, features from uh, Paul Wall, B.O.B., uh, Kevin Ross. It's going to be a good situation. Wonderful. So what made you decide to go the mixtape route instead of doing an album? Um, you know, I was at um, I was at South by Southwest and a lot of people ran up to me and was like, Lecrae, Lecrae, Lecrae. And a, and a lot of the, the, the feedback I got was that they found out about me through the mixtape and that that's really was the kind of the, even though I've been doing this for a while, that mixtape really helped people kind of like taste and see uh, what I was about. And so, um, and then and then part two, the mixtape just allows you to, to do some stuff that you wouldn't normally do on an album. You know what I mean? You can just rap, just nothing but rapping and that's it and um, scale down production if you want to. So that's really why I did it. Okay, I guess so. In regards to the whole rapping aspect, I mean, you're rapping on the mixtape and you're rapping on the album. So how is your rap different on the mixtape? Um, you know, on the mixtape, we can get in the studio and I and I just have a crazy idea. You know, like I just had a crazy idea for an interlude. You know, we were just talking about, uh, you know, a record label that was just like, man, stop telling the truth, tell lies. You know, and I just wanted to rap from the perspective of somebody who uh, was, was signed to a label that just wanted them to lie all the time. And... Um, and you know, I wouldn't necessarily do that on an album. It's it's just kind of fun. It was funny at the time. We was in the studio clowning, so we just recorded it. And that's the kind of stuff I'll put on a mixtape. Versus the album, it may have a central theme that I'm really trying to get people to see, and um, and grasp. And so that's that's the difference. Okay, I like that nice little breakdown for us. So we definitely follow you on Twitter. Okay. And we know, as I said before, you're not a serial tweeter, but when you tweet, it makes us say, hmm, you tweet some pretty profound things. Mm. So we're going to base the rest of this interview off of a couple of things that I found on Twitter. Okay. Are, you, are you nervous? Not at all. Not at all. I got nothing to worry about. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So you tweeted, just ran into Ace Hood. Respectable. Told him I appreciate his transparency. And if you ever want to talk life and faith, I'm out here. So, with that being said, uh, what rappers are there that in the industry that you do talk life and faith with? Oh man, lots of guys. You know, whoever um, whoever wants to go there, we go there. You know what I mean? Like, uh, at the end of the day, I, I think a lot of people gotta understand rappers are people, and right. so you know, artists are people, and and people wrestle with all types of issues, and they have questions about stuff, and so you know, anybody who I'm who I've had conversations with, you know, everybody from the game to Crit to Kendrick. You know, we we'll talk. It's like not like, hey man, so how was your performance today? You know what I mean? It's just it's just life and and so on and so forth. And so sometimes faith comes up, and sometimes um, just other aspects of life come up. Okay, so something else you tweeted was, "There's no maturity without growth, mm. and there's no growth without growing pains." Mm. So what I want to know is, what are some of the growing pains that you endured as an artist? Oh man. Man, you know, I think the, the the thing about it is like I'm trailblazing in a lot of ways. You know, I'm running in the lane that, you know, a lot of people haven't run in. And, um, and, and because of that, you know, you're looked upon as a leader and you're doing things that no one's done. And so when you're trying to do those things, you know, you, you may make mistakes or drop the ball or, you know, not come across clear, you know. And so, you know, I liken it to like shark hunting. If nobody's ever hunted a shark before and you get out there trying to hunt a shark, you might get bit a couple times before you actually catch them. Right. And so, you know, that's that's just kind of the, the growth of this. You know, if you've never done an interview before and you get in front of a camera and you, you know, you, you just you just learn. And then on top of that, just a lot of the scrutiny and, and criticism that, you know, people will give you, um, you know, it's constant. It's 24-7 on social media and so on and so forth. So you just learn like, OK, you know, um, this is a, an aspect of what I have to deal with and it's something that's going to help me grow as a person. So come on, you got to give us at least one in-depth, like, I, I guess, what would you say has been one of the biggest growth pains? I'll give you some time to figure right. it out, take your um, time. No, I, I honestly think one of the biggest, one of the biggest issues for me um, was was just kind of a whirlwind life, you know, and, and, um, and you know, you wake up in the morning and you got to do an interview and then you, you got to record and then you've got to fly here to do a show and then, you know, 
um, you got this and this and this set up, but you have priorities. You have family, you have people you love. And so I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate through that. And, and, and sometimes, you know, honestly, it's just kind of like, man, I don't want to drop the ball on what really matters. Because at the end of the day, my family is going to be here. You know, the music comes and goes and, and the lights, camera, action comes and goes. But my family's going to be here forever. So that's the priority that I have had to learn to, uh, to, to make first and foremost.